my name is Rachel Graves, and my project was on um, rhizosphere dwelling bacteria. Um, so I was interested in um, isolating a bacterium from the rhizosphere, um, and I knew that pine trees secrete uh, what are called phenolic compounds. Um, and so I wanted to look at the roots of a pine tree. This is an eastern white pine here, and this is the one that I took it from. Um, I wanted to see if I could find a bacteria that's actually um, tolerant to the phenolic compounds that are um, produced by the roots, uh, because usually they're antimicrobial. Um, but obviously if there's uh, bacteria living down there, then they have to be tolerant to the phenolic compounds that are being secreted. Um, so I was just interested in finding out if I could uh, see some down there. Um, so I dug up some short roots, which are here. Um, they're the smaller roots off of the big root that you might think of, um, and they're kind of twig-like. Um, and I brought them to the lab and stored them in the fridge while I did some other things, because I needed to get the phenolic compounds out of the roots. Um, so what I did is I uh, magic bulleted some of the roots and turned them into like sawdust. And we extracted phenolic compounds using a sock slit apparatus, which you can see here. And the sock slit apparatus produced this aqueous mixture, um, which looks like apple cider, but it's not, <laughs> and that contains phenolic compounds. Um, so what I did with those is I put them into a Kings D medium, um, and the medium um, would later have my bacteria inoculated on it. So I made a slurry of some extra roots and some water, and I uh, placed that on the Petri plate that had the phenolic compounds in it. And I actually had a pure culture immediately, which you can see here. Uh, and we found that my bacteria grows incredibly quickly. <laughs> and that's just after like two days. Um, and so I already had a pure culture, but I continued to subculture and grow it. Um, and tried to get some, you know, unique, distinct colonies, which was kind of hard because my bacteria grew really, really quickly. Um, but I eventually could get some distinct colonies, little um, circles. But it was hard because they grew so quickly. Um, and my, uh, I did some microscopy, um, and I gram stained in this picture. So this is actually my bacteria named KSCRG1, and I found out that they're rod-shaped and they're really tiny. This is under uh, oil immersion, um, and that's 400 times, um, and they're about 5 micrometers by 0.6 micrometers, which is really, really tiny. And here, just for reference, is a Bacillus cereus that we also um, gram stained. And so they're pretty similar, but a little different. Uh, which is interesting because later I'll talk about the Bacillus uh, genus a little bit more. Um, we also tested susceptibility to antibiotics. And these pictures are the plates after I did that. And we found out that uh, KSC RG1 is intermediately susceptible to penicillin. It has a small zone of inhibition, as you can see here. Um, and it's susceptible to both streptomycin, tetracycline, and Oh, this is, sorry, this is penicillin. And it's only a little small circle, which is how you know it's intermediately susceptible. Um, and chloramphenicol, it's also susceptible to. Um, but it's resistant to phenolic compounds and the control. Those are the same. So we put these same phenolic compounds that we had extracted earlier in, on the um, disc, and that had the same effect as the control. So we knew that my bacteria is resistant um, to the phenolic compounds, which is really interesting. All right, so we extracted some genomic DNA, and uh, it was sequenced in its entirety by the Hubbard Genome Center, that's at UNH, and um, we got that back, and we had to clean up the sequence data, so we trimmed the technical sequences uh, with Turnomatic, and we assembled sequence reads with, um, what's this called? Uh, into longer fragments, called contigs, the spades. Yeah. <laughs> And then we annotated them um, with PROCA and mined out some interesting genes to us. So what we found was a 16S RNA, which is usually really good at uh, determining what type of species you have, um, told me that I could have a Bacillus cereus or a Bacillus thuringiensis. 
and um, that's what I got for almost every single gene that I looked at in Blasted. Um, so I wasn't sure what type of bacillus I had, I just knew it was in the bacillus genus. Uh, and that's really common, it's hard to know uh, which one you have, it's hard to find a gene that'll tell you which one you have. Um, but I also looked at this Cry22AA, and what that is, it's a um, crystal forming, um, a crystal forming gene. And that's interesting because uh, Bacillus thuringiensis is, um, is known to create these crystals when they form spores. And that's actually used as a pesticide. A pesticide. So this bacteria is commonly used um, to kill bugs and pests that are growing on crops. So it's a very common um, bacteria and it's used a lot in agriculture. Um, we also found a corn punching lactonase. And that's interesting because um, that gene is present to destroy an AHL, which is really common in quorum sensing. And quorum sensing is when bacteria are talking to each other. Um, and so if this destroys the, the way that they talk to each other, maybe this bacteria is there um, to keep the other bacteria from attacking the pine tree roots. Um, so maybe there's some kind of symbiosis there. Um, we don't know, but it would be really cool to study up on that. Um, and then these two uh, housekeeping genes here that I looked at uh, gave me a little more certainty that I had a bacillus thuringiensis, um, but we're still not 100% sure. It would be really cool to mine out some more genes um, and possibly study it more and uh, be able to tell if I do have a bacillus thuringiensis or you know, very, very similar bacillus cereus. Um, and with further testing, I'd like to see if KSC RG1 is um, degrading these phenolic compounds. We know that it's tolerant to them, um, but it'd be really interesting to know if, you know, they're eating it, if they're using it in some way. And um, that would be cool to do in the future. And I'd also like to characterize those pathways for degradation. It's just, it would be really interesting. Um, if I had more time, I would have. And I would also like to confirm that I have a bacillus thuringiensis. Good, thank yeah, you. Thank you. Rachel, can you just tell us uh, briefly um, who helped you with the extractions of the yes. phenolic compounds? Happily. Um, so the chemistry department, and specifically Dr. Young, helped me with this, um, this extraction because she had done um, extractions before using the SOXO apparatus and uh, she knew you know that we had to use methanol that we had to use a rotovap to um, evaporate it afterwards she was really really helpful with that we were a little lost great thank you, thank you.